Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. 844-236-6010 is our number. And, of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please go to my website, brightsideben.com or criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com, and you can order products right off the website. You can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team right off the website as well, or you can call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. 2470. And of course, for you guys interested in checking out our Truth Skin Health products, including our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, our new Blemish Repair Complex made with N acetylcysteine, NAC, and vitamin E, and chromium, and the B complex, and vitamin B5. You can uh, check out all our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. That's truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. If you're dealing with a health challenge of any kind, this is your program where we break down the disease process. Basically, the bottom line here is your diagnosis is really not relevant. The breakdown process in the body occurs generically. We've been talking now about connective tissue and fibrosis for a couple of weeks, maybe more. And this is a fundamental way the body breaks down no matter what your diagnosis is. In any case, a diagnosis is nothing more than a snapshot of what's happening in your body right now. Your diagnosis is a verb. It's a, it's a description of a process that's occurring in the body right now. It's a description of a current process. This current process, if we're going, really interested in, in healing, if we're really interested in being healthy, this current process, whatever it's occurring, can be deconstructed and reverse engineered. It can be taken backwards to its cause. And behind all diagnosis, behind the processes of the break, uh, 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 breakdown in the body that we call a disease, you will find the same basic underlying mechanisms. And one of the most important is fibrosis and connective tissue degradation. And this is not just true about disease, it's true about the aging process itself. This is a common mechanism of how we get old and it's a common mechanism of how we break down. It's a hardening. Fibrosis can be thought of as a way the body cements chronic wounds, patches up chronic wounds. It's the body's attempt to repair damage. So while the direct cause of the manifestation of aging, including heart disease and cancer. These are the two leading causes of death and associated with the aging process, of course, as well as brain diseases and dementias and autoimmune diseases. These all involve fibrosis. While you may be diagnosed with, a, with an autoimmune disease, multiple sclerosis or amyotropic lateral sclerosis or type 1 diabetes or whatever it is, you may be diagnosed with heart disease, you may be diagnosed with cancer. Underneath it all, you're going to find the same basic fibrotic mechanisms, uh, the body's attempt to repair chronic wounding. This is all disease, you guys, all disease. 
inflammation, immunity, fibrosis. It's the body's attempts at repair. That's why it's called dis-ease. The body's out of ease and it's attempting to repair. The body's in a protective mode. It's out of ease. This understanding eliminates the doctor, except for perhaps to teach, to explain. That's what doctor means, to teach and explain. But as far as doctoring, as far as medical intervention, once we understand that the basic mechanisms of bodily breakdown are about protection, about defense, about repair, about an attempt for the, of the body to patch up leaks, basically, attempting to, to defend itself from damage, once this computes, once we get this understanding, we'll see how silly, how dumb medical intervention is, particularly pharmacological intervention. How the heck is taking a drug going to help the body repair itself? In fact, taking a drug is going to suppress repair, especially anti-inflammatories. Anti-inflammatories suppress repair. Who thinks that's a good idea? Now, I understand that if you're symptomatic and you've got pain, if you're miserable, there may be a time when you want pharmacological intervention, but it isn't going to help you get better. Anti-inflammatories don't help anybody get better. In fact, they are a leading cause of side effects and toxicity. The question to ask if we are dealing with a disease, if we are dealing with inflammation, if we are dealing with fibrosis, and the question to ask if we're truly serious about reversing it, if we're truly serious about avoiding it in the first place, if we want to age gracefully, if we want to eliminate the pain and the misery and the suffering that are associated with the disease, the question is not what drug do I take? It's not what doctor do I go to? What specialist do I go to? It's not what surgical procedure do I need? It's not even what supplement do I take? Although vitamin E and vitamin A and glucosamine all have antifibrotic properties. The question is, why is my body in defensive posture? What is the attack? Where is the attack? And why is my body and my biochemistry out of ease? Why is it in dis-ease? Why is it not in safety and security posture? This is the fundamental requirement for health, safety and security. Not just physical health, by the way, mental health, emotional health, spiritual health. They all involve safety and security. It's no accident that on Abraham, Abraham Maslow's pyramid of, of requirements, security and safety are right at the bottom, right at the fundamental, right, or right at the foundation. Nothing else happens until, unless we're safe and secure. Every living system requires safety and security if it is going to grow, if it is going to be effective. It is if, if that living system is going to be healthy, it must be safe. Disease is lack of safety. And the primary question to ask is, what's going on? Why is the body not safe? And that's true about your relationships, too. That's true about governments. That's true about countries, nations. Nations that don't feel safe aren't healthy nations. Relationships that aren't safe aren't healthy relationships. If you're having a problem with your, with your husband or your wife or your spouse or your girlfriend or your dog or your kids or your boss or your neighbor, guaranteed somebody doesn't feel safe. If you want to improve your relationships, make sure that you're, the person you're relating to feels safe. Make sure you feel safe. And likewise in the body, if you want to be healthy, you've got to figure out how to make the body feel safe. If we want to address the diseases of aging, if we want to address aging itself, if we want to address diseases themselves, the primary question to ask is, what is the body protecting itself from? How is it that the body is becoming so damaged that repair mechanisms are chronically activated, leading to disease and the aging process? Well, guess what? With the exception of congenital defects, such damage occurs from malnourishment, that is nutritional deficiency, toxicity, especially food toxicity, and uh, leaky gut is involved there too, chronically elevated blood sugar and low blood oxygen. Where have you heard that before? All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We will continue when we come back from our break. 844-236-6010 is our number. Don't go away. We got more good health information coming at you right after this. Okay, we're back. 
on the bright side at Pharmacy Span. 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you, which we will get to. Uh, we'll get your calls here at the bottom of the hour, as we always do. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, please go to truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Find out what so many people, thousands of people have found out over the last year and a half that you're not going to find any better products, any more effective, any more potent skin health products than you'll find at truthtreatments.com, including our Truth 5% Retinol Gel, Truth Bomb, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and now our Blemish Repair Complex. I formulated them all. You know, when you see a commercial on TV for some doctor or uh, some celebrity who tells you that they made a skincare product, they formulate a skincare product, that's not true. There's no doctors in the lab making skincare products. They don't know how to make a skincare product. You think Cindy Crawford knows how to make a skincare product or Dr. Savak knows how to make a skincare product? These people are marketers, and you deserve more than a marketed product. You deserve an effective product. You deserve a potent product. And I wouldn't be selling it if I didn't know that it wasn't going to make a, a guaranteed 100% difference in your skin and very, very quickly. As anyone who's used our Truth Skin Health products will tell you, you can find out all about it at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so... We're talking fibrosis, we're talking uh, aging, the aging process, disease, it's all related to the body's attempt to repair itself. The only question we need to ask ourselves, if we are truly interested in reversing the disease process, and remember disease is a verb, what we call diseases are based in processes, they are not nouns, they become nominalized, which means they become made into things magically, they become made into nouns, and this is where we lose our power. Once something's a noun, it is a thing. You cannot change it. And this is why doctors and the medical model will put you in jail if you say cure. Because a thing can't be cured. But a process can be reversed. And if we understand disease as the end result of, uh, of processes, or as processes themselves, it becomes obvious that you can stop a process. You can reverse a process. You can't do it with a noun, but you can with a verb. What is the process that leads to disease? Repair. What is the process that is disease? Repair. That means the question to ask is what is the body repairing itself from? What is, the, what is causing the damage in the first place? And you'll always find the same things. Nutritional deficiencies, toxicities, especially food toxicities from leaky gut, and sugar, which represents a toxin, as well as chronically low levels of oxygen. None of this requires a doctor. None of it. I'm sorry, doctors. And I got a lot of friends who are, who are medical doctors, and they're good friends. They're not necessary. Not for health and wellness, perhaps for teaching, which is what a doctor should be doing. That's what we do on this program, but not for intervention. We have control over how our body is breaking down. And so while medicine is useless and impotent to deal with the causes of disease, and there's nothing in a doctor's magic bag of tricks that can do anything to, to feed the body or to reduce toxicity or to improve, to improve oxygenation. Guess what? We don't need them. Once we get this through our heads, that the body's breakdowns are, are completely in the realm of our lifestyle, behavior, uh, our lifestyle with, with some exceptions, with some exceptions for congenital issues, but for the most part, chronic degenerative disease it's, the causes are in our laps. We're responsible for it. Once we understand, there's going to be a lot of unemployed doctors, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. There'll be a lot of doctors delivering pizzas or, or doing drywall or somehow in some way serving the public in a positive fashion. The manifestation of fibrosis shows up everywhere in the, in the world of health and in the world of not health, in the world of disease. We, don't just, always, we, some, we just don't call it fibrosis. In the liver, when there's fibrosis, when there's excessive fiber following damage, we call it cirrhosis. In the nerves, we call it amyotropic lateral sclerosis, ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease. If it happens in the spinal cord, we may call it spinal stenosis. In the uterus, we'll call it uterine fibroids, or we'll call it endometriosis, a miserable condition that affects almost 10% up to 10% of uh, non-menopausal women is associated with fibrosis. If you go to the doctor and he says, oh, you have endometriosis, we got to take that uterus out. He's not understanding that endometriosis is the end result of fibrosis, a repair mechanism, a defensive mechanism following the excessive growth of tissue. 
itself associated with inflammation. In the brain, fibrosis is called Alzheimer's disease. Yes, Alzheimer's disease is a fibrotic condition. Those amyloid plaques that they want to vaccinate you against, they're fibers. Likewise, Parkinson's disease. Yes, Parkinson's disease is the manifestation of fibrosis. And the, the Cinemet or the levodopa that they give you does nothing to address this fibrotic condition, which follows nutritional deficiency, lack of oxygen, and toxicity. In the heart, the fibrosis is called atherosclerosis. In the nervous system, we'll call it multiple sclerosis. One of the most important and critical places where the fibrotic condition and where this repair mechanism kicks in is in the blood. The blood is the life. That's the last place you ever want fibrosis. If it's localized to the uterus, that's bad enough. If it's localized to the, to the brain, that's bad enough. But when it's in the blood, it's everywhere. In fact, blood fibrosis is probably a factor, maybe a major factor, maybe the major factor in the progression of all disease. Fibrotic blood is what I've been calling dirty blood. All disease is cell disease, and all the cell disease is preceded by dirty blood. And fibrotic blood is one of the ways dirty blood shows up. Fibrotic blood, remember, the blood's connective tissue. And so if you can have fibrosis in the rest of the connective tissue, you can have it in the blood too. Blood is liquid connective tissue, and as counterintuitive as it is, it's important that we understand it as such. So fibrotic blood is dirty blood, and it precedes all cell disease. How does fibrosis occur? Nutritional deficiency, toxicity from food, and that includes sugar, and a lack of oxygen. And that's true about fibrosis in the blood as well as it's true by, as well as it's true about fibrosis anywhere else. Problem is, the blood is supposed to circulate. The blood goes from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, and so now you've got fibrosis everywhere. And once the blood flow becomes fibrotic, once the blood flow becomes clogged, once the blood flow flow becomes sticky and impeded, and once the blood becomes dirty, lots of things can happen. For one thing, your heart now has to work much harder to keep the blood circulating. And this can lead to cardiovascular problems, especially when they're compounded by nutritional deficiencies. Blood that's not, And by the way, when the blood is clotted, it's not able to deliver nutrients back to the heart. So clotted blood causes more heart problems, causes more clotted blood, causes more heart problems. And you get this vicious downward spiral. That's a common, a common feature of all chronic degenerative diseases. Bloods that, blood is, that's impeded or that's clotted or clogged or fibrotic and not flowing is less able to make the return trip back to the heart. This can result in edema and swelling of the legs. It can result in varicose veins. It can result in hemorrhoids. Sluggish blood also impedes the movement of the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is part of the circulatory system. It's not blood per se, but it's part of the system. And so sluggish blood is going to impede the, the movement of lymph, uh, lymphatic fluid as well as blood. And that means the accumulation of poisons. That means cysts, especially skin cysts. This is all following dirty, clotted blood. Can you begin to see how important this is? And can you begin to see how relevant our strategies of nutrition, of oxygenation, and of, of repairing leaky gut are when it comes to all diseases? I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. All right, we are back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. You can also head over to criticalhealthnews.com. got blog posts. And, of course, you can also purchase any of the longevity products you hear us recommend or advertise on the program at criticalhealthnews.com, brightsideben.com, and pharmacistben.com. And you can purchase your Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Our number today, 844-236-6010. Hang on if you're on hold. I just want to talk about a couple of interesting articles. This one from... Uh, the journal Movement Disorders, Pathogenic Role of Glial Cells in Parkinson's Disease. The glial cells are basically connective tissue cells, the brain's version of connective tissue cells. And it turns out that Parkinson's disease, as I've been saying, and Alzheimer's disease is associated to fibrosis following repair in the brain. This is so important. These glial cells, you don't hear about this very often. Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease represent the end result of the body's attempts to repair the brain following damage 
Of course, damage always being associated with nutritional deficiencies, toxicity from food and sugar, as well as hypoxia or low blood oxygen. From the University of Reading's Hugh Sinclair Unit of Human Nutrition, protein supplement may cut the risk of heart disease and stroke. Guess what? Whey protein, according to this study anyway, uh, had a, uh, a, a positive effect, an 8% reduction in the risk of heart disease, stroke, as well as, uh, well, heart disease and stroke in folks who had mild hypertension. Those taking the supplement had lower blood pressure and cholesterol and healthier blood vessels. That's whey protein, my all time favorite protein supplement. You'll find whey protein in our Slender FX product. There's whey protein in most quality protein supplements will have whey protein in them. Whey protein is the bodybuilders, is a bodybuilders and athletes' favorite supplement. And although I do like my bone broth protein, I have to say, uh, whey protein's got to be the single most important source of protein. Whey is the single most important source of protein uh, in a supplement form, anyway, uh, that you'll ever find. Whey protein is rich in building substances. It's got intestinal health substances. It's important for probiotics and good bacteria in the gut. It's important for the immune system. And, of course, it's wonderful for building tissue and building muscle. And now, according to this article, anyway, this study uh, from the University of Reading, it may also help cut the risk of heart disease and stroke. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Dan in Texas. Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side, Dan. Hey, Ben. It's great. Uh, it's great. a uh, great experience for me to talk to a life coach here. I didn't know if you maybe oh. didn't know this. You're my life coach, Ben. Oh, I appreciate that, Dan. What's going I on? Wanna give you, I want to give you just a little testimony and some tips and tricks. I'm um, 40 years old. I've been 10 years ketogenic, and for nice. me, what mattered also is gluten-free, of course. Um, I discovered the Longevity product along the way. I have my own little kind of stash that I built up, built off of the uh, 90s for life. Um, I want to I want to just give you major respect. Your food diary and exclusion diet. Mm. It's free and it's so powerful. Isn't it? it changed our life. I, in my family, we cook 90% of we eat from scratch. And uh, I've only been sick once in those 10 years. So this is just a really powerful thing. Turn, That's awesome, turn all Dan. Life around. Yeah. Um, now, I didn't admit, I can't take credit for the food diary and the elimination diet. It's pretty much standard protocol among savvy uh, alternative healthcare practitioners. I just well, think it's keep awesome. Like, you, it, ben. What's that? Please keep on the bullhorn about I it. Will. I, I will. I will. Everybody hears about it. Um, uh, one big compliment I got I met an old coworker. He says his, uh, his exact quote was, Hey, you haven't changed at all in 10 years. And frankly, it's disturbing to me. So I think that is a big compliment. <laughs> That's great. Um, uh, so for other listeners, let me. I, I have a couple tips that made my life easier. And the whole cooking stuff from scratch you know, after you figure out what your food issues are um, amongst your family members. It, you know, you can cook on the weekends. Get yourself a vacuum sealer. If you got an issue with plastic, you, there's vacuum sealers that can you know vacuum up a mason jar. So consider that for everybody. Um, one book that was really helpful is uh, Doc Wallace's like, Let's Play Doctor. It's like an encyclopedia. You got an issue. I had a little like hmm. food odor issue. I went to Doc's book. Wham, I was zinc. I had a stressful job drinking too much coffee, burning through some stuff. Needed a little bit of extra zinc. Took care um, of the problem. Then, uh, at, right away. Uh, in That's one day. awesome. Um, another one is, uh, of course, we have tangy tangerine in the house. But uh, one thing we do for my son is we'll mix that in with Rebound. So with nice. two things that you can mix, you kind of end up with a sliding scale of like four flavors. So if you can uh, tie in one, throw a little bit of the other in. So very good. Very in. good. One quick question, if I can. Yeah. Um, baby, so I see like a lot of keto products coming out now. Yeah. Beta hydroxybutyrate. Oh. You know anything about that? That's a good question, actually. Yeah, beta hydroxybutyrate. Uh, anything time you hear the word butyrate, there's another. Uh, there's a GABA, gamma amino butyric acid. Oh, that's going to be. You're going to hear more about GABA uh, and and uh, HMB. When I was uh, doing my bodybuilding and weightlifting many years ago, there used to be a supplement called HMB, which is a, the B stands for butyrate uh, and beta hydroxybutyrate. As you mentioned, these are all things you're going to start to hear more about because they are uh, they're ketogenic substances. But more important, they're technically versions of what are called short 
short-chain fatty acids. Now, we talked a little bit about that in the past. These SCFAs, short-chain fatty acids, are found uh, in butter and, and many ketogenic foods. Vin apple cider vinegar has something like a short-chain fatty acid kind of substance, and they have general health-promoting effects. They're appetite suppressant. They're mood-enhancing. They're very effective for digestive health issues. All of these but butyrates and, and acetates that you hear about uh, in terms of uh, uh, nutritional supplements. So anytime you hear the word butyrate or butyric, you're going to find a pro-ketogenic and pro-health substance, and that includes beta-hydroxybutyrate and HMB, as well as, uh, as well as GABA and straight butyric acid, for that matter, which is found in butter. So anytime you hear butyrate, that's a good thing. Does that help, Dan? That's great. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Good. I'm so glad you called. Thank you for sharing those tips. Yeah, keep up the good keep work. Up, uh, you yeah, keep up the good work as well. That's really awesome, Dan. Take care, man. All right. I love hearing testimonials like that, and I, I get them a lot. I don't know why you guys don't call me because it's great. If you have a testimonial and you share it on the air, even if you're shy and you share it on, on the air, you are doing a major good deed for a lot of folks. It's one thing when I tell you how the mechanism works and, and why these things are important, why these strategies like food diaries and elimination diets and, and restricting your sugar and various nutrients supplements are important, but it's a whole nother, uh, whole nother level of credibility when somebody who's actually employed these strategies and revert. And I know there's a lot of you guys who've actually employed these strategies and reversed your chronic degenerative diseases. Gives a testimonial. It's, it, it's a whole nother level of credibility. So I really encourage you guys to share uh, at eight four four two three six sixty ten if uh, if you've experienced positive changes uh, with any of these strategies that we talk about every day on the bright side. All right. Let's go to uh, Robert in Colorado. Is this Skinny Robert? Yes, sir. What's up, Skinny Robert? Where you been, man? Long time no oh, see. Just, well, you wanted a testimony. I'm 100 pounds down. I'm back on track. Um, You're a walking testimony. You're a poster yeah. child testimony. Yes, you are. <laughs> That's true. I'm doing, doing the healthy body weight loss pack and just switched over to full keto with the 75% healthy carb, healthy fats. and. Uh, what are your healthy protein? fats? What are you doing? Butter, butter, butter. <laughs> <laughs> lots yeah. of butter. Yeah, lot, lots of butter. I'm, I actually, I'm, I chased some uh, belly, uh, pork bellies. Get away from I don't know if that counts as a healthy fat. Are you talking about that fried stuff in the bag? I'm not sure that counts. No, no, no. Ha this is stuff I make. Oh, you make it. Okay, hang yeah, on, Robert. Yeah. Don't go away. we got to take a break. I want to hear how you make it. All right? Okay. So don't go away. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We will be back right after this. We're back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Skinny Robert. So let's hear what you're doing, buddy. <laughs> pork bellies. <laughs> How do you make pork? How? What exactly are pork bellies? They're they're well, really the belly of the pig. Bacon. It, 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 well, side pork. You know. Okay. It's, it's like just like bacon, but before they put anything in it. So you just locate that. Uh, since I'm a Farm Bureau guy, I find it from. Uh, local farmers and 4-H kids that grow their own stuff and uh, that way it doesn't have all the stuff from commercially produced pork and nice just slice it up you know there's several ways to do it but I like to just slice it up thin just like a piece of bacon and I put it on a uh, sheet tray in the oven and put some uh, seasoned Very salt nice. on it some garlic and nice. 10 minutes later awesome. you have some nice uh, Nice fat. <laughs> nice pro-ketogenic pork bellies, and they're probably very satisfying and very filling as well, right? Yes, they do. You don't have to eat very much, and boom, you're, you're good to go for That's awesome. For Deep, many more hours. Lots of salt, like Celtic sea yeah. salt or some well, kind of good salt? Yeah, I use, I use uh, real salt. I also put a little bit of, uh, I'm a lifelong practitioner of lottery seasoning salt, and the, which since they took the MSG out of it, it's, it seems to be okay. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah. Good deal. Thanks for the tip, yeah. Skinny Robert. Keep up the good yeah. work yourself. Yeah, right, right. So tell me about how I get my blood pressure down. Breathe deeply. Blood pressure is a major sign of bodily distress. Uh, it's, right. it's basically what we've been talking about here for forever, really. Bodily right. distress is the major reason why blood pressure goes up. Um, it usually involves uh, some kind of manifestation or, or the end result of nutritional deficiencies, hypoxia, low blood oxygen, as well as digestive toxicity. The stress hormone cortisol can also be involved. So first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you're, everything I've always talked about, make sure you're patching up the gut. Uh, if you have 
leaky gut issues using Fucoid Z. Um, aloe vera can help. The amino acid glutamine can help. Um, of course, probiotics are always going to be important for all digestive health issues, food diary and food elimination diet. A slow, deep breathing is one of the fastest ways to lower blood pressure. In fact, if you don't want to take the time to slow deep breathe, just sitting in a hot bath for five minutes or 10 minutes, I shouldn't say take the time, but take the effort to sit and slow deep breathe. Not that it should be really a lot of effort, but sometimes people just don't want to do it. Just sitting in a hot bath will do it. If you have high blood pressure and it's significant, you want to take two hot baths a day. And that will uh, lower, lower your blood pressure so significantly that you're going to have to go off your, or at least reduce your dose, maybe even go off your medication. That's how powerful just a slow, uh, sitting in a hot bath can be. Um, yeah. Other things for, uh, other strategies for lowering blood pressure include nutritional supplements like vitamin E, which is a, a blood thinning supplement, the ultimate niacin, which is a vasodilator and can help drop blood pressure. Um, omega-3 fatty acids can be helpful. Tomorrow we're going to talk about some ways that you can uh, thin the blood, and those can have some some beneficial effects on improving uh, improving blood circulation uh, we'll do that tomorrow uh, anything that's going to cause a breakdown in the blood vessels may cause a problem so using vitamin c may be important as as well as again uh, eliminating digestive toxicity and sugar uh, as far as sugar goes in addition to eliminating sugar using nutrients that help support blood sugar can also have a beneficial effect on blood pressure chromium vanadium selenium sulfur omega-3 fatty acids arginine, which is also an antihypertensive. Um, taurine can help. These are all strategies for low, uh, helping the body process sugar and then thereby lowering blood pressure. All right, Robert, I got to motivate. Right. Thanks for your call. Right. Appreciate it. Take care, bro. All right, Bob in Minneapolis. Good morning. Welcome to the Bright Side, Bob. Good morning, Ben. Hey, my question is twofold. Um, you know, considering uh, mutated genes that pass from generation to generation over evolution, cystic fibrosis uh, I'm a, I understood possibly being a genetic type. Um, well, you know, now I'm going to I'm going to hold your feet to the floor. That's absolutely incorrect. But I'm going to I want to know what you're thinking. Why would you think okay. that fib? And I'm not picking on you, but I'm just curious to know why would you think that excessive secretion of fibers would be something that would be passed from generation to generate or passed from you know offspring from parent to offspring via genetics? Uh, well, what would make off, you think uh, that? Well, one thing that would make me think that is, in fact, when I think of uh, uterus fibrosis yeah. in a young, young child, you know, 12 years old. Okay. Um, being so young. Um, okay, gotcha. Not, not, so not, being, in, not being, you know, uh, degenerative based on, but, you know, your immune system breaking down. I hear you. So you're saying because it occurs in such young, ch young patients that it must have a genetic component because it can't be degenerative. There's not enough time for degeneration. Is that what you're saying? Well, considering the fact that there are such things mutated genes, because that's how anthropologists trace our genealogy, as well as in a young person, yeah, you put the two together, and is there a possibility for that? Or I find. Well I as, but I have a simple question. In addition to that, just considering fibrosis as a whole, whether I mean not just blood but also tissue, is it reversible? Not only if you did the perfect diet and oxygenation, not only would you be able to arrest it, but can you, would it actually like flake off from the tissue and uh, reabsorb back into the body? Yeah, 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 absolutely it will. Here's the thing. Absolutely, that's exactly what would happen. But here's the thing. You have to have a premise here. You gotta start off with a hypothesis. All right, you gotta start off with a theory. The theory is that fibrosis is a manifestation of repair and repair is only initiated when there's damage. That's the theory. The way you work with a theory in science is you test it. And so, I'm giving you the theory, and the theory is that all, all disease is reversible, and it's, it's the end result of a repair process, and which itself is the end result of damage. That's the theory. Then you test it. You look for damage, places where the body can be, da uh, where the damage can be initiated, i.e. digestive system, the digestive system, blood sugar, possible issues with hypoxia, uh, um, nutritional deficiencies, etc. And then you start to work with those areas. If you get results, then uh, uh, you know you're on the right track. If you don't get results, then you still you still have opportunity to work. You fine tune. If you don't get results after a certain amount of fine tuning, then you know your theory is not right. But you got to start off with a premise. You got to start off with a theory. You're starting off with a theory, and I'm not attacking you. I just want you to see how this works. You're starting off with a theory that it's genetic. So let's just say you're starting off with a theory that it's genetic, or other people are starting off with a theory that's genetic. Then there's nothing you can do. 
then you're stuck. You follow me? You don't have uh, you don't have a, a recourse. So what good does it do you to start off with that theory? If you want to just give up, then fine. Start off with the theory it's genetic. And I'm not attacking you. Please don't hear me as as being attacking. But I'm just saying, if you're going to start off with the with the mainstream theory that oh it's genetic, then you're stuck. But if you start off with the theory with a hypothesis that this is a the manifestation of of damage that's occurring through something I'm doing, now you have an opportunity to work. Now you have an opportunity to try to correct the problem. Now you can proceed scientifically. And then you test your hypothesis. You've got to start off with a hypothesis, but you have to test it. And then you do all the things that we talk about on this program. And in my, based on my observations of 32 years and thousands of patients, it works. The ideas we're talking about here work. And so if it doesn't work, that doesn't mean the theory's wrong. That means you need to fine-tune it a little bit more. If you fine-tune and fine-tune and fine-tune, you're sick of fine-tuning, fine. Go with your next theory, which is it's genetic and I'm stuck with this. But that doesn't serve us. Does that make okay, sense? So the, yeah. So then basically the fibrosis, if you take care of yourself properly, then the fibrosis that you have developed so yes. far would flake on yes. and uh, reabsorb in the body. And you yes. would actually regenerate uh, the, the connective tissue in the blood. Uh, yes. Yes. So that now you're more vibrant. Yes, now the damage is not, when the damage is, you repaired the damage by using the, putting the supplements in that were missing for perhaps, or eliminating the toxicity that was getting in through the digestive system or reducing sugar, the body will heal itself. It won't have a need to keep repairing itself. Okay. Okay? Okay, I just want to make sure I understood that, because I always knew that you could arrest it, but I wasn't sure if, you, if it would flake away and, you know, the body would... Now, if you have scar tissue, if you have scar tissue, that's a little different. Scarring is permanent. The scar tissue is, and that does occur, and there are scar tissue, uh, fibrosis, is, uh, scars are associated with fibrosis too. So once there's a scar there, that's different. You follow me? Yeah, yeah. So if you have what scarring and you, then? you got to cut it out. A scar represents the body's attempt to repair something stronger than it was before. It's okay. like extra, it's like extra reinforcement. You follow? That's a bad it's tear, like, yeah. Yeah, and if it happens in part in the brain, it can be a problem. And if it happens in the uterus, it can be a problem. Absolutely. And then you need to you can't have it surgically removed out of the brain, but you can have it surgically removed out of other parts of the body. But you can't reverse a scar. Okay. Although I do have some people who say that they reverse scars with nutrition, it, it doesn't really seem biochemically feasible to reverse a scar. Okay. Okay. That, All right. That well, it up. good to talk. Good to talk to you. Thank you so much. All right. That's, you know, you got to start off with a premise here, you guys. And the premise is, is that the, the body knows how to heal itself. The body knows how to be whole. The body wants to be healthy. Uh, Jim in Michigan, you got a, uh, about a minute here, buddy. What's going on? Jim, Jim? I have questions about cancer patients, and they say uh, cancer loves sugar. Now, now, when you put sugar in categories, does that also include fruit? And, of course, I know it yes. can include potatoes and that type of thing. Yes. How about honey? That's it. Yes. Honey? Yes. Everything. Yes. Everything. <laughs> I know. I hate right. to be the bearer of bad news. What we really want to work on is our craving for the sweet taste. Not replacing sugar, but figuring out how to re how to eliminate that craving for sweetness. Sweetness is associated with a pleasure hormone called dopamine, and it really comes down to finding another place to get pleasure, finding another place to get that dopamine increase. But that's, that's a, a subject for another day. Thanks for your call, Jim. Appreciate it. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright side. We'll be back at you tomorrow with more good health information. Have an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. We will talk to you all later. Bye for now.